Welcome back, everybody. Josh, the RV nerd with Bish's RV here with another new reflection fifth wheel for you. This is the new 311 BHS. Uh, 311, by the way, not just a model number, also a police code for indecent exposure. Ask me how I know. Um, <laughs> this thing is a bath and a half bunk model. I think that's the quickest, fastest way to describe it. But we have opposing slides in the living room with an island kitchen, dual power awnings, awesome campsite window coverage, uh, automatic leveling, a big full-size camp kitchen. And I swear big full-size camp kitchens are something that has uh, almost phased out of the RV industry. This one actually has full sink, stove, refrigerator, some cabinet space, a little bit of anything and every stuff. But there's some awesome cool details on this. Like when you get to the bathroom of this one, they have reimagined what an RV's fit, like fifth wheel shower skylight could be. Instead of a gigantic hole getting cut in the ceiling of your RV to be able to create a skylight, they created a recessed ceiling tray to give you extra headroom if you're taller than the average bear, but they installed a light in it. So it doesn't matter if it's daytime or nighttime. If you're taking a shower, you can see what you're doing because most RV showers with a skylight, if it's nighttime, you can barely see what you're doing in there. And sometimes it doesn't have to be over the top amazing. It just has to be functional. And you see something like that and you go, why has nobody been doing that? Until you get to like the motorized RV industry, you almost never see features like that and that's the kind of different kind of thought process and ingenuity and originality that you get over here uh, really with grand design pretty much as a whole I, I've really become a big fan of the way that they find a way to do floor plans just a little bit differently now the RV's got some high points and low points. They're working on getting rid of a lot of, uh, of a lot of the carpet. I was a little bit surprised to still see carpet in the slide in the bunk room, uh, but at least I guess you're not really eating food there. And again, a big full-size camp kitchen. Like I said, I'm gonna show you highs and lows, ups and downs, ins and outs on this thing, including some awesome tow safety factors because you wanna keep your family safe when you're going down the road. And if you like how we show you the good with the bad and everything else, make sure you hit that subscribe button and let's see what she has to offer you and your family. And I think the first time I ever saw a floor plane like this, it was from Open Range. I think it was called like a 376. And I've seen a few different versions of it since then. And a lot of them have kind of fizzled out of popularity. And I think it's because they weren't quite willing to go all the way in. Um, I, I feel like this one's come closer to doing that. Whether or not it crossed the finish line, that's really up to you, uh, I, I do suppose. Now we're 50 amp service. Uh, you'll see that this one's outfitted with dual centralized air conditioners to really kind of maximize our cooling potential. Up top here in the kitchen, you're going to see the big uh, rain sensoring XL vent fan. You will not see one of those in the bathroom. It's one of my uh, few points of critique that I'm really going to have for this here. We're going to come back to the kitchen in full detail, but I do want to mention when uh, you're looking at a reflection like this that gets the bigger, like I think that's roughly 16 cubic foot 12 volt compressor fridge to help offset that thing, uh, you're going to have a 370 watt solar panel up on the roof. Now we're looking at big reflection, not reflection 150. And there's a couple little differences, touches here. Uh, most of the stuff, the key stuff is really the same, but we're starting to get a little more ritzy glitzy, like we have a solid surface countertops. Our um, cabinets have magnet hold backs uh, now instead of clips. And there's going to be a few other little details like that uh, as we go through. Now this one you might notice gives us a theater seat directly across from that uh, uh, Roku Smart TV Entertainment Center right there, which is something I really like because I mean that is just the definition of a no necker uh, no neck wrecker entertainment center. Kind of reminds me of, like the uh, the old Maxell tapes commercial where the dude was getting blown away by the speaker, you know, as Butler's like the usual sir, and uh, sort of just how that one strikes me. And this one gives us fantastic campsite window coverage over here. That's one of the things I think is really, really awesome about this one, including uh, over here. Notice how they actually dip the window below the table level. Most manufacturers don't do that. Uh, and we're looking at a booth today, uh, but you could get this outfitted with like a, uh, a table and chairs or one of those, I, I like to call them like Franken table setups that they do uh, quite a bit. Um, <coughs> holy crap, <coughs> pardon me. When we step up to full reflection, instead of just a shade prep door, you also get the full shade in the door. Now, they're really good about putting outlets uh, down where you can see them, but they tend to try to match the uh, the outlet cover 
uh, the color of the Outlight cover against the wall that it's on. So sometimes those can be a little easily missed. Now, if you notice over there in the little stovetop nook, you've got yourself a little black household outlet, but uh, I think that's because white and it would look funny there. And I have never really seen brown household outlets that ever look good. So I, I think they're doing the right things where it matters. I like the little light fixture touch of there. That's just sharp, nice looking stuff. But interestingly, what is not sharp are the corners of the countertops. Notice how they radius everything off very nicely here. And not only do I appreciate that as somebody who walks through a lot of RVs uh, every day, and man, I have clipped my hips on stuff before. It hurts. I've literally ripped pants and belt loops on all kinds of stuff. I've I've shredded up a lot of dollars worth of khakis over the years doing this. Jake from State Farm's got nothing on me when it comes to khakis. But in a bunkhouse, when you've got little kids running around, I think that's a really, really important detail. Also, um, in the full reflection series, not only are you still getting the bigger oven, but they upgrade to a sealed burner stove. So, like, if there is any kind of, like, spillage or something like that, you don't have to disassemble half the stove to get that all cleaned out. And what do you think about the window behind the stove top? That does open for airflow. I feel like every time I ask that question... People either say it shouldn't open for air, so there's no screen, so it's easy to clean. Or some people say there shouldn't be a window at all. And then just as many people say, oh, I love it. It's terrific. I, I don't know what the correct answer there is. I'm not sure there is a single answer that really pleases them all. Uh, I'd also be kind of curious. I like theater seat right here. You could do a hide a bed. What would your preference be? Considering the fact that we've already got, we're about to see a hide bed in the rear bunk room and, uh, you know, its own private, like, you've got a lot of sleeping back here. I don't know that I feel like you need a lot of extra sleeping back here. I feel like it covers it. But, you see how you've got a gas dreaded move, bunk, get out the way up there. That creates, in a sense, like, hey kids, go to your room. Like, on a rainy day, you've got a survival space in here, which I think is very good. <gasps> Ooh, it's not a big giant XL fan, but you've got a second centralized air up in the bedroom, and I love that they included a vent fan here, plus you have another small uh, vent fan um, in the bathroom. So every room has some kind of uh, airflow situation going on with it. Now, when you look at this, like I looked at it and I kind of felt like that open, that top bunk was like exposed. Like it felt like I'm going to roll over and fall off that thing. Part of the reason is because this mattress isn't actually tucked down into that lip right there. But if you are a little bit worried about somebody potentially rolling off, there are like um, arm rail guards and stuff like that that you can put on beds to prevent that from happening. Um, as we work our way down here, these shelves you can see have been kind of reinforced. It is the shelves are the ladder to get into that uh, upper bed right there. And you might notice how they got rid of the boxy side trimmings on the windows. So it's just a little bit cleaner. Um, you still have the same blackout roller shades here that you're going to see in the uh, the living room era. Uh, era? Hmm, area. Yeah, whatever. I, I don't even know. But, you know, it is a bunk room. It does sleep some people. Let's take a look at that function right there. You see, this, this is one of the other kind of cool things about this. Because you've got... The uh, fold-down bed on top, you've got the big, like what I'm going to call big kid bunk, um, above the camp kitchen, and you've got a hide bed. You could sleep three or four back here. Um, now, just keep in mind, if you're you're doubling up on the hide bed, doing the Sir Mix-a-Lot double up, the kids are going to have to be a couple kids that don't fight one another, so that's kind of a thing. Now, when I first looked at this, I thought, that's a problem. If that half-bathroom door opens when this slide is closed there's no way for you to see that and prevent it from getting smashed well then i realized when i saw this little hook over here i was not the only person that thought of that because even if that door does manage to pop open it's not going to be able to go open very far and that hook right there is going to catch it and prevent it from getting destroyed when you open the rear bunk slide out i will tell you though always use caution on something like that if you're pushing a slide button and you hear some kind of Rice Krispie snap, crackle, pop that you're not uh, expecting or predicting, you need to stop pushing that button right away and go investigate. Just trust me. I've learned that one the hard way from experience. Now, I looked at this, and first of all, I thought, that's really weird. Why is the toilet backwards? And then I thought, ooh, it's a little bit narrow to walk in there. So, um, I put it to the test. And... What I found is it actually was very organic. You walk right in, you sit down, uh, use the toilet, it works. Now, 
Because this is a bathroom sized for smaller kids, it is very tight for adults, especially on the right-hand side. My elbow was all up in the wall panel. But in the middle of the night, uh, if, uh, you know, having an extra half bath back here means that, like, uh, it, you know, if we have nighttime little potty runs, well, you know, everybody can get in and out without, uh, you know, fighting one another. And you don't have people walking clear across the entire RV, trouncing around, waking everybody up. Or if somebody's in the shower, the bathroom is not locked down. Even if, like, one of the kids are in the shower, if you had to, if you're an adult, you could still come back here and use that half bath uh, as need be. Now, you may have noticed there was carpet in the bunk slide, but there's not carpet over here. That is a funky little inconsistency that kind of surprised me and not necessarily in a positive way. I sort of feel like if we're going to pull the carpet out of the slides, pull them all the way out. But at least where you're eating... I guess at least that's carpetless, and and I do suppose this is where you're going to spend the, the most time. So if you're only going to do uh, one or the other, I, I guess they did something, you know, intelligently. Now, real quick, one thing I like to do is I like to actually try to sit down uh, at the sofas and give you what I call the, the view from the driver's seat. And... Uh, Man, you're just, you're right on top of the sucker. That That is not a bad seat. Not to mention the fact that you can also um, pivot that TV. So uh, not really going to be able to watch it from the kitchen. That's one of the only downsides there. But if you do have the family kind of over here, like maybe you're feeding the kids in the morning and you're sipping your coffee in that theater seat or sofa or whatever, um, you can make that work. It's not going to be too awful bad right there. Now, uh, one thing here, they didn't go with maximized windows over on the campsite, but they did include some overhead storage. Let's take a peek up in there. Um, all pocket screwed cabinetry. Again, you're getting magnet holdbacks on this. The, uh, fireplace down below the entertainment center we haven't talked about, but you've also got the, uh, enter like actual Bluetooth DVD stereo system in the cabinet above the TV that's easy to miss. The kitchen, a lot of times when you get into a multi-slide model like this, the kitchen often gets um, sacrificed very harshly. I don't feel that's the case here. And that very well might be one of the things that really helps this one uh, remain and stay successful and relevant over time. Uh, a lot of builders I've seen try to make a layout like this. The, the kitchen really has absolutely no storage or prep space. I think this is a really good kitchen, even if it didn't have the bunks. Like, if you chop the bunk room off the back of this thing, I think it'd still just be a great RV, and I think that's an awesome recipe to have right there. Uh, again, you've got the blackout roller shades. The lights in the super slide over here, they actually do have a dimmer switch, which is awful darn handy. And something you really don't see, like when you get into one of these uh, reflections, um, you open that uh, cabinet door on the side of the overhead uh, cabinetry right there, and that's where your, your control panel is located. It's nice that it's up there, but it's a physical switch panel, which doesn't bother me, but if you still want to, you can get their uh, their app and still control stuff right off your phone if you are so inclined. I, I think that's a nice little kind of in-between or workaround. Generally speaking, we are pretty pet friendly, although one thing I am keying in on, and I hope you appreciate that I show good with bad, this does have a toe stubber kitchen slide. Um, I was thinking Reflection had moved away from those, but maybe I've just, I see a lot of different RV brands and sometimes that stuff gets all kind of mishmash mixed them up on me and uh, occasionally I, I don't get it all right. Uh, anyway, what I am excited to show you though, I think they are nailing and reinventing the shower space in a, in a little bit of a sense. We will get there in just a second. First of all, uh, gotta do my duty. Um, <laughs> Wreck-It Ralph puns, love it. Anyway. Uh, porcelain foot flush stool here. The leg room, the elbow room around that was great. But Reflection's greatest asset became their greatest liability. With their propensity to include more stuff, like that extra linen cabinet right there, at my height, I was kind of bumping my head on it. Now, it wasn't terrible. It wasn't really super offensive or anything like that. Um, but it's a real thing. It was really happening. I do like, though, that we do have that. I mean, that is legit linen space. And it's not just like open face storage. But what I was getting at here uh, in this bathroom is that they're, they're doing a new take on a skylight. And instead of a big giant piece of glass or, well, uh, fiberglass, you know, plastic that lets uh, light in during the day but doesn't help you at all at night, they're doing 
no cuts in the roof, which means no big giant thermal hole in the ceiling, which I really like. One less of those. Um, and look at this. The headroom in here was fantastic. And if I'm taking a shower in the middle of the night with the light above me that you can also turn on and off as you please, I can actually be very comfortable. I can see what I'm doing in there. Now, it is a radius shower. Being fair again, some people... Uh, dislike the fact radius showers can be a little bit limiting on elbow room. And if you, uh, these, these little corner shelves, they, they don't even hold a shower beer. But what is nice is the fact that it does include the little shower caddy over here. Uh, Grand Design doing some Rockwood things, if you will. Uh, it gives you a place to keep all your body washes and shower beers so that you don't have to, like, bend over and knock your noggin or anything like that. Now, pardon my footprints down in there. I just kind of want to complete the full visual look for you. People ask, why are showers floor flush in the upper deck of an RV, but not on the lower deck, like in a travel trailer? And the answer is really due to the fact, uh, plumbing code. You know, and, and what they would have to do in the holes they would have to cut in the floor to try to accomplish that for you. Now, it is really off in the corner here, so it's at a, a rough angle for where I'm standing on camera. But that corner mirror and medicine cabinet is actually super functional. Because what it does, if you look at how it's angled, and that is a big, deep sink. I like that. But it, you'll be standing in the middle of the room, not off to the side of the room. So it's very functional in that way. Now, the RV can have... Very limited hanging storage. You'll see up in the, the main bedroom area, there's not a ton, a ton of hanging storage space in there. But if you look at this, there's a removable shelf in that potentially linen cabinet in the bedroom-bathroom combo slide uh, that if you wanted to create extra hanging space in that, you totally could. Not to mention just having an extra drawer down there is always useful. Sliding up front here, we have a 60 by 80 true queen bed. The north-south bed reflections like this do not have... Um, any sort of king bed accommodation. Here's an interesting thing though. Manufacturers don't test whether or not you can actually lay down in a slide out while it's retracted. When the bed is fixed in the body of the RV like this, no question, you can get in here, you could use it in transit if you wanted to. That's totally, totally up to you. Now in the Reflection 150 series, where you have the little, uh, this is where some upper deck structure is placed. That's why you have these step ups. There's, there's cross beams and members up in there. Um, they do, uh, in the small Reflection 150 series, they're carpeted. Here they get rid of that in this space, uh, which is a another nice little touch. And you can see you actually have room to, to like get dressed in this bedroom, which I think is really, really fantastic. Now, in the main bedroom, you see that cabinet over there on the left? That is going to be our only real kind of like hanging storage space. So you're going to want to kind of keep that in mind a little bit. Everything else in here is going to be some form of like dresser storage. Um, it works potentially for some folks. It doesn't work potentially for other folks. Uh, I'd be, I don't know. Do you think this is sufficient? Do, do you think it works for you? I don't know that there's a wrong answer to that. I also don't want to miss the fact that this one does put your TV hookups in a funky spot because you have sliding pocket privacy doors uh, for like the bathroom and stuff. But, you know, it uh, it is what it is. And again, we do have dual centrally ducted airs going on here to help keep you a little more cool and, uh, well, you know, like a cu cucumber. <laughs> Looking under the bed there, taking a look at the storage. Um pretty generic, pretty straightforward, nothing to really write home about, but hey, it's there. It's not wasted space. I do believe though, we are ready to close this light up and take a look at it in transit. And I think we're about to hit a harsh reality. So kind of like we talked about with this just being a wardrobe slide, you know, you can totally use that bed. That's also the reason if you were like, why isn't the bed centered in that front wall? It's because the wardrobe slides uh, a little bit deeper, basically. So they had to off center the bed. Um, the, uh, you know, if you're going down the road and you, you pass the last, um, rest stop for like a thousand miles immediately after you do so, the kids will need to use the bathroom. So thankfully you can still use the, uh, the front primary bathroom. When we turn around though, I probably to nobody's surprise, the rear bunk room, the half bath, all that stuff is just flat locked down. But what I expected I didn't think we were going to get to the fridge either. And maybe once again, that's a little attention to detail that Reflection put into this that some other ones didn't. You can't get to the fridge, or freezer, pardon me, but you can get to the refrigerator side of things, which is really, not. I think, the more key thing for travel stops. So we have refrigerator, primary bed, and uh, bathroom. I don't think you're going to be doing a lot of travel stop sleepovers. Um, and keep in mind, with this being 12 volt, this runs 
just even off the truck power, like some people are like, well, can the solar keep that up going down the road? You don't realize you don't even need solar on one of these for that fridge to run going down the road. The power coming in from the, the truck through the, the, the plug to the RV will run that sucker perfectly going down the road. Very travel and friendly. Now, sliding back here and giving you a look at this whole broadside thing, you can see she's pretty sizable. Um, and giving us another look at the weights and the measures there, I think we can all pretty safely agree that half tons need not apply. And there's going to be some people who are like, I, I can't believe he even needs to say that. You'd be surprised the questions I get. But not everybody's a towing expert. And uh, there's a lot of people out there who are very willing to give you bad towing information. Um, in exchange for your hard-earned money. And I will not claim that I always get everything right, but I'm not going to intentionally be one of the people that does it wrong just for the sake of a quick sale. I don't want to put your family's uh, safety secondary to just making a quick buck. It's not worth it to me. Enclosed uh, Nautilus-style docking center. I like how they have it turned um, kind of, you know, toward the side of the RV. A lot of RV manufacturers are starting to kind of flush mount that to make the pass-through look bigger. It looks pretty, but... Um, I don't know, man, if, if something gets wet, that's just going to kind of dribble down to that little plastic bucket style thing. No big deal there. If, uh, it's sideways and there's a leak, that could be a problem. Tankless on demand water heater. Uh, that is a 60,000 BTU water heater. Now that's the kind of thing you might see, uh, because reflections are intensely popular. So a lot of other manufacturers will do the best they can to kind of make their own reflection of a reflection. <laughs> My point here though is... They're going to be potentially cheaper. You got to ask why. There's going to be reasons why. Um, you know, sometimes it's maybe they're using a smaller furnace. Sometimes they're uh, they don't have the tank heaters. They don't have the factory standard tire pressure monitoring this has, and something else. No other fifth wheel, other than Grand Design fifth wheels, have currently at the time of this filming anyway, is a factory standard anti-lock brake system. So in a panic emergency braking situation, this RV will track and trail right behind wherever the vehicle goes the way it's supposed to. And you have to do nothing to make it do that. Um, a lot of RVs, if you have to panic stab the brakes, you could theoretically lock up the brakes and that could cause the trailer to start skidding. And sometimes the trailer could try to actually skid around and pass you and uh, that's a problem, okay? Um, <laughs> that's a good way to get spun around on the highway. I think we've all seen pictures like that of like, on like Facebook or something. That's just not gonna happen here. It's, it just, it, it borderline, I'm not gonna say it's impossible, but man, stuff has to really go wrong for that to happen. So that's a massive uh, safety thing that I like to talk about here. Not to mention, you also have uh, factory standard Goodyear endurance radials and Moride shock dampening suspension uh, shackles between the tires there. Now, once again, we're way back here, but I want to point out, you got the dual power awnings. We have some awesome campsite window coverage, which is fantastic. A lot of bunk models don't have that. Um, this, ooh, I just kind of noticed. I'm glad I stood back here. Six point auto leveling. That is an exceptionally rare feature in this size and class of fifth wheel. Usually, until you go up to Reflections Big Brother Solitude, the high profiles, you don't see a lot of six-point leveling out there. That is really, really outstanding. All Reflection fifth wheels have auto leveling, but I, in my head, I was just kind of lumping them all together as having four-point electric. I'm glad I spotted that. See, sometimes I forget stuff too. Now, this is an awesome big camp kitchen. But because this is on such a tall I-beam and because the whole camp kitchen's mounted above the floor, since it has a real sink, that gave them room for the plumbing, that means that this thing stands uh, awful high. Case in point, using myself as a reference. First of all, the headroom coverage for this. So you've got two power awnings, plus you got the big coverage right here. Like you can see that my fingers are even peeking off screen. Like this is really high. And that's its greatest asset and its greatest liability because uh, you know I'm a little bit over six foot and if you notice, the countertop is like pretty much elbow height for me. So it's sitting right about my chesticles right here. Um, it is nice that it has a real sink with a real drain. If you're a little more gravity friendly, that sink, you might have a hard time actually getting up there and really seeing what you're doing with it. Now the griddle locks in place, which is really cool. So if it's sitting out here and one of the kids 
bumps it. It doesn't just go flying shut. I like the bigger refrigerator. I like that uh, dr uh, drawer over there. And it's all galvanized rolled steel countertop material, which is awful nice. Uh, so if there's any kind of splash or grease splatter or anything like that, it just, it's super easy to deal with, super easy to clean. Now, on the back side of the RV, you might notice a factory towing package. Uh, that is a 300, or pardon me, well, 300 pound vertical limit receiver hitch with safety chain hooks and a four way wiring harness, and it is rated for 3,000 pounds of horizontal towing. Um, where that could be really nice is if you do want to get off grid a little bit, having the ability to like mount a portable generator on the back of a sucker or something like that could be really, really handy. And obviously, we've got a ladder to get you up there to the roof. So giving you a quick peek at that, um, you'll see a couple things like, uh, you know, this one's outfitted with that uh, second air conditioner right there from the factory. And uh, you've got the 370 watt uh, factory standard solar panel on this uh, because uh, with a reflection, when you get the big fridge, like you're looking at here, you get 370 watt. When you get the 10 cubic foot 12 volt fridge, you get the 180 watt uh, solar package. But either way, you have a 50 amp MPPT charge controller uh, working on you there. And I do believe if you wanted to add a second one of those big panels, I, I'm pretty sure the RV is actually capable of accepting one and that charge controller handling it. But I, I, as I was wrapping up, I realized I almost kind of forgot something. If you look at these steps, like I looked at these and I went, why are they using 26 inch wide steps on a 30 inch wide door? But as soon as I looked up, I realized when these steps fold in, that step right there sticks down far enough, it would, a bigger set of steps would work. So this is actually one of only two reflection floor plans that does use a little bit more narrow steps. What is neat though, is they don't cut corners, they still use the little flip up steps like this, so that when you lift the steps, you know, you can kind of brush stuff off and it just helps keep more dirt out of the RV. Just one of those, again, little touches attention to detail that they're doing here. Like uh, the, the new big safety handrail uh, gives you more to hold on to and it doesn't fold over the door. Because if it folds over a shut door and you're inside, like your kids are playing a prank on you or some hooligans at the campground mess with your stuff overnight, Short of screaming for help, there's really no way to do it except, you know, boot kick the door open unless you're going to somehow, like, dangle one of the kids out of an emergency escape window, which my parents actually had to do uh, with me once when I was a kid. But that explains a lot of things when I fell on my head. So once again, thank you for tuning in. Um, I've seen floor plans like this over the years of my career. A lot of floor plans like this have kind of phased out, and I think maybe they just lack some of the detail orientation that this one has. But whether this one sinks or swims, I suppose will really be up to you folks, whether you like it or not, whether you buy it or not. So I'd be kind of curious to know, what do you think about it? Now, I'll leave you a link in the video description. Normally, you'd be able to check our discounted uh, sale pricing on there. Grand Design does have a company policy that prohibits us from publishing discounted dealership sale pricing on a national medium like our website or RV Trader or anything like that. Um, you might find MSRP there. Unfortunately, that's literally the only thing we can publish. We are required to ask you to contact our team and then we can absolutely sell this thing for less than MSRP. Just keep in mind that that's a, that's a, a handcuff that we're shackled by. So uh, normally, you know, it's a click away and today that just can't be the case and my apologies there. I'd change it if I could, but I can't. Anyway, let me know what you think about this one. I love that skylight. Like I said, just. It, sometimes it's just the littlest things that make the big difference, you know? When you're ready, we're ready. We don't do hidden dealer fees, we just do everything else. So take care, stay safe, have fun, and happy camping, everyone.